Good morning, ladies. We are going to try this for the 15th time now um, to do these videos for the Bible study. Um, the other video that I did the other day, they deleted it because it was too long. So 45 minutes is too long. So I'm going to break down chapter by chapter in multiple videos um, so that we can uh, get caught up finally. And I know this is Satan just trying to attack and keep everybody from learning how to speak God's language and stuff. So we're going to rebuke him in the name of Jesus right now. <coughs> Excuse me. So chapter one talks about learning to speak God's language. And would you believe that the major, most biggest part of our problems is right under our nose. It's our mouth. We can't live in victory without being well informed concerning the power of words. Hi, baby. So we need to learn about our mountains. Our mountains can be mental, um, financial, relationships, anything. So are we talking about our mountains or are we talking to our mountains? When we have mountains in our lives, we talk about them. We hook up with friends and, you know, not as to say complain, but talk about the issues that we're having in our lives. What are some mountains that we talk about to others? I know people talk to me about um, emotional trauma, issues with relationships. Um, I even talk to you know people about um, if I've done something wrong to somebody and not realized it, I talk about that mountain. And does it do any good or solve any problems by talking about them? No. God's word instructs us to talk to our mountains. In Mark 11, 22 and 23 says, And Jesus answering, saying to them, Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done with, to, for them. We are not to hurl our will at our mountains, but the will of God, and his will is his word. In Luke 4, verses 1 through 13, Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. He answered every trial with the word of God. He repeatedly said, it is written, and quoted scriptures that met the lies and deceptions of the devil head on. We try this for a while, and then we do not see quick results, so we stop speaking the word to our problems and once again start speaking our feelings, which is probably what got us into trouble to begin with. Persistence is a vital link to victory, and we must know what we believe and be determined to stick with it until we see results. Obedience and forgiveness are as important as persistence and faith. Say that. Obedience and forgiveness are as important as persistence and faith. Speaking the word of God is powerful and absolutely necessary in overcoming. If a person thinks he can live in disobedience but speaks God's words to his mountains and gets results, he will be sadly disappointed. Mark 11 verses 22 through 26 needs to be considered as a whole. In verse 22, Jesus said to constantly have faith in God. In verse 23, he talked about releasing faith by speaking to mountains. In verse 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. He speaks of praying, believing prayers. 
in verse 25, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. This is a command to forgive. In verse 26, but if you don't forgive, then neither will the Father who is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. There is no power in speaking to a mountain if the heart is full of unforgiveness. Multitudes of people who have accepted Christ as their personal savior fall into the deception of trying to operate one of God's principles while ignoring another. Obedience is one of the central themes of the Bible. Disobedience may be the result of ignorance or rebellion, but the only way out of the mess is repentance and a return to submission and obedience. And a reminder, there's a lot of ifs and buts in the Bible, so don't ignore them. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2 says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Twice in those verses, obey was mentioned. Obey the Lord. Notice the ifs. So often we choose to ignore the ifs and buts in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 says, God is faithful. Who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord? But I urge and entreat Entreat means to ask someone earnestly or anxiously to do something. So Paul is asking us earnestly. Um, but I urge and entreat you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you. But that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. This right here is why a women's ministry is needed so much. We need to be like-minded. Um, we can't have divisions among us. If we are to be disciples, we have to be of one accord. We're not going to do our community any good um, if they see division among us or unforgiveness or anything like that. So we have to train ourselves God's way to become united. The study note on that scripture says, by saying brothers and sisters, Paul is emphasizing that all Christians are part of God's family. Believers share a unity that runs even deeper than that of blood brothers and sisters. Perfectly united in mind and thought, united in the same mind and in the same conviction, the believers must work for the same cause, which is the gospel, by restoring unity and common theological judgment. We see that God is faithful and we see that we draw upon that faithfulness by honoring him with obedience in relationships. Our disobedience doesn't change God. He is still faithful, but obedience opens the door for the blessing that is already there due to God's goodness to flow to us. Some of us are mere infants. In 1 Corinthians 3.1, Paul says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. 
Christians must learn how to talk God's way. And with this Bible study, this is what I'm praying um, will help teach us to do that. Um, Hebrews 5 verses 13 and 14 says, Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. If you're not opening up your Bible and getting that solid food, you'll stay an infant. Um, it is very important to open up that Bible and read God's Word. It's full of promises, hope, um, so many things that are wonderful. But you have to open that Bible to learn that. Many things are clearly defined in the word that tells us God's will, but there are other things we need to make decisions about. We need to therefore know God's heart and be led by his spirit. It takes time to know God, to know our own hearts, and to be honest with ourselves and with God. It takes time to learn about motives and to determine whether ours are pure. If it be thy will, in James 4, verse 2 and 3, it says, You desire, but do not, do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have, because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. The study note on... James 4 verse 3 says um, God promises to give his people the wisdom they need to live faithful and other oriented lives but believers must ask with sincere faith not with the desire to elevate themselves or satisfy themselves on pleasures James 4 verses 15 and 16 says instead you ought to say if it's the Lord's will we will live and do this or that as it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes, and all such boasting is evil. Whether verbalized or not, the sense of living within God's will for all of life is basic to authentic Christian living. There are some things in the Word of God that are so clear that we never have to pray, if it be thy will. Salvation is a good um, example. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of truth. In James 4 3 it says we ask but fail to receive because we ask with wrong purpose and evil selfish motives. I'm pretty sure we're all guilty of that. If we are not excuse me, if what we are asking for is not clearly spelled out in the word and we're not positive we've heard from God about the issue, it is wise and an act of submission to pray, if it be thy will. There is a difference between faith and confidence and foolishness and presumption. Unless that difference is discerned, the spiritual life becomes a tragedy instead of a triumph. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Do not be wise in your eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. And we need to let God be God. Balance, wisdom, prudence, common sense, and good judgment. Proverbs 13, 16 says, Wise people think before they act. Fools don't, and even brag about their foolishness. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I know a lot of people experiencing this 
right here. Um, the devil attacking their minds and telling them lies that they're not worthy, they're not good enough for other people. Um, just so many things. Extremes are actually the devil's playground. If he cannot get a believer to totally ignore the truth and live in deception, his next tactic will be to get the believer so one-sided and out of balance with that truth that he is no better off than he was before. Wisdom is another central theme of God's word. There is no real victory without it. Again, you're going to gain wisdom if you open your Bible and read God's word. I can't stress that enough. Wisdom is defined as understanding what is true, right, or lasting. Good judgment, common sense. Proverbs 1 verse 1 through 4 says that wisdom is full of prudence, and prudence is good management. The adjective form of prudence is prudent and is defined as using good judgment or common sense in handling practical matters. One might say that wisdom is a combo of balance, common sense, and good judgment. The statement that you can have what you say means you can have what you say if what you say lines up with the will of God. When you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, you can see the will of God accomplished in your life. So we really need to remember, um, we need to stop talking about our mountains and start talking to our mountains. Remembering God is faithful. Um, he doesn't change. He will remain faithful. Um, so we need to remember to have faith in God. And we can't doubt in our heart, but believe that what we say will happen. We need to cast our, might, our mountains and into the sea and just seek God's help to let us do that. Let him be him. And pay attention to your ifs and buts in your Bible. Um, it specifically says, if you fully obey the Lord your God. And Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. Both verses. If you obey the Lord your God. There's a reason. And if somebody says off key to you and, and it stumbles you, get in the word. Research it. Don't be afraid to do that. God's going to tell you the truth. Um, try getting out of infancy. Open your Bible a little bit more. Um, daily, multiple times. 